Hello and welcome to another Thaglish math video tutorial in trigonometry. And in this video, we'll talk about Pythagorean theorem and some properties that involve angles and triangles. Given triangle ABC with sides AB and C respectively, the sum of the interior angles is always equal to 180 degrees. So, kung kukunin niyo yung measure ng angle A, measure of angle B, and measure of angle C, the sum is always equal to 180 degrees. If it's not, it's possible that it's not a triangle. The second property tells us that the combined length of any two sides exceeds that of the third side. So kung i-add natin yung length ng side A at saka side B, it should always be greater than the length of side C. Dapat din, pag in mo yung length ng A at saka C, dapat greater than side B naman. And lastly, pag in mo yung side B at saka in mo yung side C, dapat greater than yung sum ng length nila sa length ng side A. Pag isa dito ay hindi na satisfy, ibig sabihin hindi triangle yung nasa figure chat. You also need to remember that larger angles are opposite longer sides. So yung angle A, pag lumala kayong measure niya, umahaba din yung length ng side A. Okay? So halimbawa si angle B ay greater than sa angle A. So ibig sabihin yung side B natin dapat ay mas mahaba din kesa sa length ng side A. In short, proportional dapat yung angles at sides ng kahit anong triangle. Let us now try applying those properties on the following problems. For the first one, we need to find the value of x and the measure of each angle in the given figure. So, dun sa tatlong property, alin kaya ang pwede natin gamitin? Yes, ang pwede natin gamitin ay yung unang property na ang sum ng lahat ng interior angles ay equal sa 180 degrees. Bakit? Kasi kung mapapansin nyo, yung given dito ay tatlong angles, correct? So, ibig sabihin... Para magkaroon tayo ng equation, kailangan alam natin yung measure ng angle A, tsaka yung measure ng angle B, tsempre yung measure ng angle C. At dapat, pag in natin yung tatlo na yan, equal yan saan? Equal dapat yung tatlo na yan sa 180 degrees. Tama? So, ibig sabihin, pag kinuha ko yung measure ng angle A natin, which is 5x minus 16 degrees at i-add ko sa measure ng angle B which is 12x degrees at syempre dun sa measure ng angle C which is 7x plus 4 dapat yung sum nila ay equal sa 180 degrees now para hindi tayo mahirapan sa pagsosol no, pwede nating uh, tanggalin muna yung mga degrees kasi same measures lang naman yung apat na terms sa equation natin so, ibig sabihin, pag inalis natin yung mga degrees na yan, ang kailangan na lang natin uh, tignan na equation ay yung 5x minus 16 plus 12x plus 7x plus 4 equals 180. Ngayon, anong gagawin natin dyan? Isosolve natin yung value ng x. Okay, kung gagamitin natin yung mga natutunan natin sa algebra, if we're going to add 5x, 12x, and 7x, the answer will be 24x. Correct? Ayan. At pag in naman natin halimbawa yung uh, 16, negative 16, tsaka positive 4, the answer will become negative 12 or minus 12 sa ating equation. And syempre, 180 pa rin yung nasa kabila. The next step is to transpose the term 12 on the other side of the equation so that it will become 24x equals 180 plus 12. Naging positive or plus na yung operation natin on the other side of the equation. Now, do, by doing this, we can now combine terms 180 and 12 which is equal to 192. To get the value of x, we just need to divide both sides by 24. By doing this, this will become 1 and the final answer is x equals 8. 
The next step now is to transpose the term 12 on the other side of the equation so that it will become 24x equals 180 plus 12. Okay? Now, by combining 180 and 12, we will have 192. So, 24x, wala naman tayong ginawa, so it's still 24x. To get the value of x, we need to divide both sides by 24. By doing this, we'll have, this will become what? 1 or just equal to x. Then, 192 divided by 24, that is equal to 8. So that x is equal to 8. We now know the value of x, which is equal to 8. We can now solve for the remaining measures of the three angles. Here, let's start with the measure of angle A. Here, angle A is 5x minus 16 degrees. By substituting the value of x, which is 8, we can now solve for the measure of angle A. Which is what? 5 times 8 is 40. 40 minus 16 is? Yes, the correct answer is 24 degrees. So the measure of angle A is equal to 24 degrees. For the measure of angle B, which is 12x, it will be equal to 12 times 8, which is the value of x, right? the answer will be equal to 96 degrees. So the measure of angle B is 96 degrees. For the last angle, which is angle C, it is equal to 7x plus 4 degrees. By substituting the value of x, which is 8, we'll have what? Yes, 7 times 8 plus 4, the answer is 60 degrees. So the measure of angle C is 60 degrees. Now, if you want to check whether your answer is correct or not, you can actually add the measure of the three angles that you got. So here, if we will add me the measures of angle A, B, and C, will give us what? Yes, getting the sum of these three angles will give us 180 degrees degrees. So, meaning our answer is correct. Here, we need to identify the set of numbers that could be the lengths of the sides of a triangle. So, anong pwede natin gamitin dito? Yung pangalawang property na kung saan pag nag a tayo ng dalawang sides ng kahit anong triangle, dapat yung sum na makukuha natin ay greater than dun sa third side. So, halimbawa, umpisahan natin dito sa set na merong lengths na 8, 8, 8. So, parang ang tinatanong lang sa atin dito, kung halimbawa meron kang tatlong sticks ng measure ay 8 inches each, at pag pinagsama-sama natin or pinagdugtong-dugtong natin yung mga end, end points nila, makakabuo ba tayo ng triangle kagaya nito? Yun ang tinatanong sa atin dito. Para makapili tayo sa apat na sets na to kailangan natin gamitin yung second property. I-add mo yung unang dalawa. 8 plus 8 is 16 which is greater than the third side, which is 8. Dapat sa kahit anong combinations na pipiliin mo na dalawang sides dito, lagi dapat ganito, greater than. Okay? So, halimbawa, piliin naman natin this time yung uh, tong pangalawa at pangatlo. 8 plus 8 is also 16, which is greater than 8. At kung mapapansin nyo, kahit ito pa ang i-add nyo, itong dalawang to, no? 16 greater than 8 pa rin ang makukuha natin. So, ibig sabihin, itong set na to, yung unang set na to na 8, 8, 8, ay correct. Okay? Meron bang triangle na lahat ng sides niya equal? Yes, we call it equilateral triangle. Right? Ito kayong pangalawa. 17 plus 10, the answer is 27. Ngayon, ang third side natin ay 30. Is 27 greater than 30? No. Tama. 27 is less than 30. Eh dapat, ang sagot dito ay greater than. So, ibig sabihin, etong pangalawang set na chinek natin ay hindi possible na sagot. Okay? Eh paano naman itong pangatlong set natin? I-add natin yung 12 tsaka 20. Pag in ko yung 12 tsaka 20, the answer is 
32, which is greater than the third side, which is 13. Tama? Okay. Paano naman kapag ka yung 12 tsaka 13 ang in ko? 12 plus 13 is 25, which is still greater than the third side this time, which is 20. So, check pa rin. How about 12 tsaka 13 kaya? Pag in ko yung 20 rather at tsaka 13, the answer is 33, which is greater than the third side now, which is 12. So, ibig sabihin na satisfy natin yung tatlong combinations at naging greater than sila dun sa side na hindi napili. So, therefore, this is another answer. Right? Okay. So, subukan naman natin yung pangatlo. Ito. Okay? Pag in ko yung 1 tsaka 2, the answer is 3. Ang third side mo dito ay 3. Now, is 3 greater than 3? Hindi. 3 is equal to 3. Pero dapat ang makuha natin ay greater than. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Hindi possible na sagot ito. Kasi, pag meron kang halimbawang tatlong sticks na merong 1 inch, tapos merong 2 inches, at merong 3 inches dito, pag pinagdugtong-dugtong mo itong mga endpoints nila, possible na hindi ka makabuo ng triangle. Well, possible siguro, pero baka ganito ang maging itsura. Tama. Pero hindi. Dapat kasi ang mabubuo mo, dapat exactly walang dagdag bawas. Mabubuo mo yung triangle na ganito ang itsura. Okay? In a right triangle, if A and B are the measures of the legs and C is the hypotenuse, then the Pythagorean theorem applies. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Ibig sabihin, pwede nyo lang gamitin itong Pythagorean theorem if you have a right triangle. Paano ba nalalaman kung right triangle siya? Dapat, one of the sides is 90 degrees. Pero paano natin malalaman yung tinatawag na hypotenuse? Yung hypotenuse ay laging opposite ng right angle. So kung ito yung right angle, definitely ito yung hypotenuse nyo, which is the longest side in a right triangle. Itong A at B, they are both called sides. Okay? Pero paano nga ba gagamitin ang Pythagorean Theorem kung binago tong mga variables dito? Dito, ang hypotenuse natin ay yung x na. So, ibig sabihin, pag sinulat ko yan, it should be x squared equals y squared plus z squared. Let's try this problem. The slide at the playground has a height of 6 feet. So, kung ito yung example ng playground natin, itong height nito ay 6 feet. Okay? The base of the slide measured on the ground is 8 feet. So, ibig sabihin, yung haba nito ay 8 feet. Okay? Ngayon, kailangan nating hanapin yung length ng sliding board. Para mas malinaw, pwede nating i-draw dito yung ating possible na right triangle. At bakit ito yung ating possible na right triangle? Kasi alam naman natin na yung height dito ay perpendicular sa ground. Tama. Ngayon, kung ililipat ko yung mga values dun sa slide, this is 6 and this is 8 feet. Right? So, ang nawawala dito ay yung S. Now, since we have two given sides and we have a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And our equation will become S squared because S is the hypotenuse. Equal to 6 squared plus 8 squared. Ayan. So, anong gagawin natin para masolve natin yung S natin? 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. Adding these two values will give us 100. Now, if we will let this be s squared, we need to get the square root of both sides to get s. Okay? So, the square root of s squared is s. And square root of 100 now is equal to 10. Therefore, s or the length of the slide is 10 feet. Ayan. So, nakuha na natin ito, which is 10 feet. Now, let's try this classic problem in trigonometry. The bottom of a 17-foot straight ladder is set into the ground. So, a ladder is leaning against a wall. 
Imagine that this is our wall and this is the ladder leaning against it. Now, if this is the horizontal ground, we form a right triangle. It says here that the bottom of a 17-foot straight ladder is set into the ground 8 feet away from a wall. So, the bottom of the ladder, which is this one, is 8 feet away from the wall. Ano measurement ng ladder natin? Okay, it's 17 feet. Ito yung ladder natin, di ba? Ngayon, ang problema natin dito ay yung distance above the ground it will reach. Yun daw top ng ladder. So, kung ito yung top ng ladder natin at ito yung ground natin, ano yung distance nyan? The distance between them. And for this, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Why? One, because we have a right triangle. Second, because two sides are given and we're looking for the third side of the right triangle. Ang problema dito e eh, yung tamang gamit ng Pythagorean theorem. Remember, na kapag gumagamit kayo ng Pythagorean theorem, yung hypotenuse yung una yung ina-identify. And in this case, the hypotenuse is what? The length of the ladder. So, ibig sabihin, if we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, we just need to get the sum of the squares of the two legs. And in this case, ang two legs natin ay yung h at yung 8 feet. Tama. So, ito yung h natin. Ito naman yung ating um, another leg. At syempre, naka-equate yan saan? Naka-equate yan sa 17 squared. Let's try solving for the value of h. To solve h here, we need to transpose h squared to the other side of the equation. Or if you like, pwede nyo namang simplify muna yung h squared which is 64, and then simplify nyo yung 17 squared. Pero kung gumagamit lang din naman kayo ng calculator, pwede naman na mamaya na lang nasabay-sabay nyo i-input sa calculator. Okay? So, pwedeng etong gawin nyo, transpose nyo dito sa kabila so that this will become h squared equals 17 squared minus h squared. Okay? Now, to get h, all we need to do is to get the square root of both sides of the equation. For us to have h is equal to square root of 17 squared minus h squared. And by using your calculator or if you know manual computation for it, h will be equal to what? Yes, h is equal to 15 feet. So, the distance covered by the top of the ladder to the ground is 15 feet. You can check it if you like. By substituting the value h in the original equation. And that's all for this video. For more plain trigonometry lessons, please subscribe and like to my channel. See you!